And with that, we welcome you courtside. She is the national champion, WNBA champion, Olympic champion, Swin Cash. Joel Gadek, glad to have you here along with us. Swin, no one is more dangerous than when they're backed into a corner. And you've got two teams backed into a corner right now. Yeah, Joel, and both these teams at the bottom of the A-10, they're trying to play throughout the regular season to build some momentum for the conference championships. That's what they're looking forward towards. And if either of these teams is going to start turning things around here today, they'll rely heavily on one leading score. And for LaSalle, it's one of the best scoring guards in the country. Yeah, you talk about a player that can fill it up in Amy Griffin. She is a player that can score in droves. She can hit it from the outside. Also likes to go off the bounce, but don't worry. She can get her hands on a couple of deflections. We'll get out in transition. She's had a triple-double this season. When you talk to Coach Williams, he'll tell you, we have to get her going early. Well, we look at Rhode Island. Let's talk about six foot five. Oh, you're talking about six foot five. Six foot five. Jorgensen, she is a player in the middle. She loves the physical contact, but she's also a very smart player. So when a double team comes, look for her players to spot up on the outside. She will hit you. They have to knock them in today. So when you look at what's important today, two teams that have had troubles with turnovers this year. That's number one. Both of them have, but you look at LaSalle. They have to score in transition and hit the boards hard. And then Rhode Island, protect the basketball. They cannot have 20 plus turnovers and they have to hit the shots from the outside. They're going to double Jurgensen on the inside. They have to have the ability to knock it in. LaSalle won both of these meetings a season ago. We'll see what's in store for 2018. It's LaSalle and Rhode Island from the Ryan Center. Maybe a bold statement, but if Daniela Force and her team play this way the rest of the season, they're going to win a handful of A-10 games and build some confidence going into next year when the whole team returns. They have one available scholarship. If they can, in the remaining six weeks of the season, pick themselves up four, five, six, A-10 victories, that is a ton for them. She said it to us yesterday. They're not losses, they're lessons. Yeah, absolutely. And I love that phrase. She said, not losses, but lessons. Everything is a lesson because with a young team, it's about muscle memory as a shooter. It's about muscle memory with wins as well. You want to know how it feels and how you were able to get wins, especially in a tough conference like they tend. We have so many teams that are equally matched. This is the year if you want to try to make a push in the conference championships, you need to build through the regular season. And that's what both these teams are trying to do. They're chasing the Duquesne. They're chasing Dayton. And they're also chasing Fordham. And the only way to do that is to play well and play well at home. And Marta Vargas with a career high, but she just keeps adding to it. That's a nice three from the outside. And that's what you want to get as a coach. You call a timeout, you get some execution, and right away able to set your defense. And that'll be a back, nope, it's ticked. LaSalle will hang on to it. Still 15 on the shot clock, but a three is way off the mark. And Griffin tried to save it. Marta Vargas, though, how do you say half a ball game in Portuguese? <laughs> I don't know, I'm about to ask Tisha Penichero, but I can tell you one thing. Marta Vargas, she's feeling it from the outside. She's made some tough shots, but I tell you, the thing I like about her game she just doesn't seem rushed. And a lot of times, international players, it takes them a little bit to get adjusted to the game that's here. And vice versa as well. Um, I had to adjust a little bit when I went and played internationally. But once you figure out how to play and how to be within the system, it's basketball, it's just basketball. And as we see, Joe, Nicole Jorgensen's back in the game. And Vargas just runs it right into the front court herself, regardless. Now Jorgensen arrives, first touch. It'll stay with Rhode Island. Yeah, you see Jorgensen hitting her chest saying, my bad, my bad. That's usually her bread and butter right there. She'll take it up through you and able to draw the foul, but. She's been sitting there for 15 minutes. Yeah, she has to try to figure a way to get herself back in the game. And a lot of times that comes by giving her early touch down low. So I wouldn't be surprised if they try to go to her early. So Lisa Ross will check in. She'll get over him. So Jorgensen will hang out out there. What a luxury that Daniel LaForce was afforded to by the rest of her team. They picked up the pieces so that Jorgensen could sit with those three first half fouls. She wants that ball. Jorgensen and Miller. And a foul by Miller. And I like the aggressive play by both big girls on the inside. That's Jorgensen. four on Miller, too. Oh, that's four on Miller. And you see Jorgensen right here asking for the ball. 
that power dribble and not taking no for an answer. A lot of times she <laughs> post will shy away from the contact. She wanted the contact. It was either going to be a foul or a basket, and that's the mentality you want to have. Only a sophomore. So much basketball still left to play, but when we had a conversation with her, she said, listen, I have three older brothers. I'm used to getting pushed and bullied around, and so she loves the physical play on the inside. Only played seven minutes a game last year, this year, up to 25 plus minutes, but she's having an unbelievable season so far because guess what? She had to. Who else was going to do it? <laughs> Fair enough. Given an opportunity, who else is ready to step into her shoes and not only be a leader on the court, but also a leader with her teammates? And so I give her a lot of credit what she's done so far for this young team as they continue to try to build building blocks for this uh, program. Lane violation by Rhode Island. Just out of curiosity, too, we did ask how big her older brothers were because she's 6'5", so if they're going to push her around growing up playing in the yard, and they're all 6'5", six, 6'6". Six, six. Eldest played football at UMass. Well, guess what, Joe? It doesn't even have to be they push you around. I, I, my mom was 1 at 12. I have 75 first cousins, so I got a lot of pushing around growing up us playing some sports. 75? <laughs> yeah, 75. It's an expensive bill at the family reunion. <laughs> you tell me about it. <laughs> Ross trying to keep her feet. Jorgensen, right place, right time. She has eight. And now Rhode Island with its pressure. That's a foul on Ross, and it's her third. We'll see more substitutions coming in. They get Jorgensen out of there. The next 20 seconds. She's going to be playing defense. Let's make sure she doesn't pick up that fourth. And also a great call to bring Ross to the bench. She's been your hot hand offensively. You want her to pick up another foul. And Explorers need to get a good shot right now. You got Amy Griffin out there. She's going to be able to get the, get the ball into her hands. Griffin's at the top of the wheel. Miller went too early. Leaves Rhode Island with time. Cologne with four seconds. And Rhode Island has ended the last two quarters with big time buckets. And I tell you one thing, Cologne is not scared at all. She came down looking up at the clock as a guard, making sure she knew exactly how much time was on the clock. And Rhode Island had a big shot going into the half and another big shot here going into the fourth. This young team is playing fearlessly right now. Rhode Island looking for its first A-10 victory, trying to snap a nine-game skid. You wouldn't know it. That's 20 turnovers now for LaSalle. They've won the contest, first to 20. Just 14 for Rhode Island. 15 for Rhode Island. Griffin. Still a loose ball, and Rhode Island was out of bounds. Moffitt's toes were on the blue. And you wonder down the stretch as this game gets tight, it's a young team like Rhode Island, if they start feeling a little bit of the pressure. They were playing loose and free for three quarters of the way, and now as LaSalle puts together a little run, you wonder if they can withstand that run and get back to playing how they were before, as we see Cologne out in transition. Didn't have any help, but does draw the foul. And that is now five on the south. So Rhode Island will shoot free throws in a tight game for every foul over the next six minutes and 16 seconds. Now Rhode Island is a 67% free throw shooting team. We'll see how good LaSalle's free throw defense is today. hit there by Cologne and she's a player that's had a bright spot so far we talked about her wearing the face mask but it hasn't inhibited her in any way whatsoever she's attacking that glass and trying to draw the foul give her eight points the foul was Deja King's first Rhode Island again with the press and a push off that is four on Griffin Coach Williams cannot believe it. 
But she extended that arm a little bit and give a lot of credit. Ref sitting right there, able to make that call. And now Griffin's going to have to be smart. Two of the stars we talked about to start this game off. Griffin and Jorgensen both have four fouls. Good kick by Ross. It's a nice duck in by Jorgensen. You got to see the big girl inside and get her the ball. Against Wafa. Cologne's there to sweep it up. And Rhode Island content to bleed the offense a little bit. Vargas. That is her shot. She loves it off the bounce, not scared at all. And this team starting to get a little energized right now as they can sense an opportunity to take a hit, take the lead and, and, and build on it here in the fourth. That is 19 from Vargas. Six better than her previous career high. Five to shoot. Edwards. Foul underneath. It will stay there. It's against Rhode Island. And you see Vargas coming off that little screen from the top of the key from Jorgensen. That one bounce pull up. If you're paying attention to the scouting report, you know that's all her. But they haven't had an answer for it this afternoon. Vargas with a career high. You know, you asked Jorgensen yesterday, what's it going to be like to play on national television with the spotlight? And Jorgensen said, hey, I got shook a little bit last year. We went to Syracuse, first game of the season in the Carrier Dome on television. I got rattled a bit. Vargas, freshman, national TV, not rattled. Not and Jorgensen, nothing. Not at all. And right there, it's a nice pass on the inside. Whenever your post player is able to get a good seal like Jorgensen did. They're able to find her, she's able to finish, but let's see if the Explorers can get a, a good basket on this end. A 1-2-2 two, two zone is what Rhode Island's playing right now. Already four main threes for Edwards. Shaquana Edwards cannot get her fifth. And now as the minutes start to go by here, possessions start to matter more, and Rhode Island keeps extending that stiff arm. And we saw Rhode Island's practice, and they were executing offensively, defensively, and that's what they're going to need to do down the stretch right now. Vargas. Well, she would have gotten that. They'll just go home. And I like what they've done. They brought Ross off the low block, and so there's only one post on the inside. But here you see post-to-post -post pass from Ross inside to Jorgensen. They had position on Wong Fung, and... Just did an excellent job of sealing her body, turning over that left shoulder. But right now, the offense that Rhode Island is running, they're actually doing the four out of one end. They're bringing Ross out from the basket and having her move and screen on the perimeter. And the Explorers are just, their defense is getting too wide. So that leaves the driving lane for Vargas and for Cologne, for Streeter, they will be coming back in. And if they're able to take advantage of it, this could be a key, a pivotal point right now in this game. Jorgensen goes out. And we'll see how that changes things. Having just Ross in there, although Oberg is out there as a post as well. Kind of a stretch four, though. And Vargas has 21. an 8 nothing run. Have you seen a game of more 8 nothing runs or 8-1 <laughs> runs in either direction? Well, we knew that both these teams were pretty much evenly matched. So we were going to see some runs, but... It's a double dribble on Griffin. Griffin wants that one back. She realizes that she was waiting for the pressure to come, and great job by Rhode Island of not coming right away and able to get the turnover. Rhode Island now has 29 points off turnovers. Almost half their points. Yep. You see Coach LaForce is telling them to move without the basketball. Streeter well short. Over a goal. And that's a help ball. I guess that would have been a hockey assist for Streeter. <laughs> had it gone in, used the glass to over again. I think they got a little tip on the outside of Streeter's ball, actually. 
There's Ross, this time taken away. So with the bounce goes up. And Ross, she's excited on the inside. And she was actually looking to pass the ball out. And it's like, no, 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 no. You have the hot hand. You're close to the basket. You got to put it up. And KYP, know your personnel. You have Griffin that's defending you. She has four fouls. So that was a great job by Ross. That's a career high for Ross. 14 out of her. A career high. 21 from Vargas. Four minutes scoreless for LaSalle. That's a foul on Rhode Island. And here you see Ross is able to take it up and over the left hand. Nothing that Amy Griffin can do. She has four fouls. And right now in Rhode Island, digging in, trying to get this first 8-10 win. Is there 0-6 in the conference so far? Miller back in with four fouls. And eight points now for Miller. First points in more than four minutes for LaSalle. And they can go to Miller every time down if they want to. She's been posting up well on the inside. Streeter's wide open. And that's one player right there in 18. You don't want to leave open. That's only Abby her second Streeter. make. <laughs> but if you give her that much time, Swim. She has that much time. She's going to be able to knock it in. She gets those feet squared away. And we're going to take a timeout here. Coach Williams wants to talk it over. Two minutes left to go. Largest lead for Rhode Island at nine. 